and being blessed beyond measure. This is God's will for our lives, that uh, we would have life and that we'd have it more abundantly. And then we, so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so it goes beyond our temporal mindset, the blessings of God. The term blessed means receiving the favor of God. Blessed. So when you're blessed, you receive the favor of God. So blessed. If you don't mind, if you're there, let's everybody say amen. 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 Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And so as we look around the culture around us, we see in so many instances the way of the ungodly, it's going to perish. But the way of the just is going to shine, the Bible says, more and more into the coming of that great day. It's going to shine as a bright light. So why don't we just ask God to do everything He wants to do in our hearts and lives today. Let's everybody talk to Jesus. God, we glorify You. I love You, Lord. You're amazing to us. You're tremendous. You're awesome, God. I ask You to minister, touch to all of us. Your Word, God, is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword of dividing asunder of soul and spirit, bone and marrow, and it's a discerner of our thoughts and our intents of our heart. God, let the Word of Christ dwell in us richly. Jesus, don't let any of it fall on uh, distracted ground or any other type of ground other than good ground. Let us open our hearts to receive this word with meekness that is able to save our souls. And God, we give you all the glory, the honor, the adoration, and the thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And if you don't mind, let's everybody say in Jesus' name and just give him glory again. God, we praise you. You're good to us. We love you. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't you just turn to a neighbor and say, God is good, and you can be seated in the name of the Lord. God is good. God is so good. So before we get into the Word of God, just a couple quick things. First of all, I want to say thank you to everybody who's been helping out uh, Sister Walter and I while God is healing this ankle. Amen. God can heal things instantaneously. Sometimes He uh, takes us through a process. And so I will say this. I have learned a lot through the process. And all things work together for the good. And so I just appreciate the spiritual maturity of the church and uh, just people helping out so much. And the second thing is we had a really good youth service here last night. Amen. So I wanted to thank uh, Sister Shante for putting that together. She's going to try to do one a month. Hallelujah. So it was just fantastic. And then Sister Vita did an amazing job with the music last night. Fantastic. Amen. Amen. Sister Mia can sing extremely good. Hallelujah. But great to see everybody here. We're going to be looking at the blesser today. So the very first psalm. Um, in the Talmud, now everything in the Talmud is not true. This is a series of Jewish writings. But I did find it interesting that they said that Psalm 1 and 2, according to the Talmud, take it for what it's worth, was David's favorite psalms. It began with blessings and ended with blessings in Psalm 2. Strangely enough, in Judaism, they quote Psalm 1 to avoid miscarriages. Now you might say, well, pastor, does it work? I don't have any idea. I don't see anything in the Bible that says to do that. But I was thinking about it on the way to church this morning. I thought, well, you know, the worst thing it could do happen is it not work. But it could work. I mean, it's the Word of God. So it may work in some circumstances, you know. But in Judaism, they say, they quote Psalm 1 to avoid miscarriages. Um, it's also cited on Yom Kippur, which is their Day of Atonement. And then their weekly prayer meetings called the Mariv that Psalm 1 is quoted at the Jewish uh, prayer service called the Mariv. And it's a contrast 
of a couple of different groups of people. The righteous, which in the Hebrew tongue is the Zadik, and then the ungodly, the ungodly, which is Rasha, or the sinner, which is Chata, Chata. So, uh, no, Sister Walter, that's not the Chate Latte, hallelujah. But no, the sinner is uh, Chata, and godly is Rasha, and the righteous is the Siddiq. So let's just dive into Psalm 1. Many of you here could probably quote this. I'm not going to do a show of hands, but I think at least some of you could quote at least some of this. Amen. So blessed, or somebody receiving the favor of God, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So here's the thing. Where are you getting your counsel from? Are you getting your counsel from Dr. Phil? Are you getting your counsel from worldly sources? Are you getting your counsel from uh, maybe Freudian psychology? Or are you getting your counsel from the Word of God and the Spirit of God? So, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. The ungodly will tell you all kinds of stuff, how to live your life. I find this on memes on the internet all the time. They're constantly saying things like, well, when Jesus said, turn the other cheek, that's taken totally out of context. When Jesus said to pray for your enemies, that's totally out of context. I'm like, no, you're just letting your flesh work. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with being taken out of the context. It's we don't like those things. And so, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So, I want to encourage everybody here to read your Bibles. Now, that is a great way to make this last announcement that I forgot to write down. <laughs> We do have some uh, King James Word guides we're passing out. We brought 50 of them. So if you'd like one, grab one at the usher station. And they're small enough to fit in your Bibles. You know, the uh, Bible, there's six, seven hundred uh, archaic words in the King James Bible. This will just help you find out how, you know, what those archaic words mean. And again, they're easy enough to fit in your Bible, small enough to fit in your Bible, won't hurt your Bible. And so those are free of charge on the way out. Please grab one of those King James Word guides. So, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So, there's a couple things here. Don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Well, what's left unsaid is who were we supposed to walk with? We're supposed to look at the counsel of the godly. And so we should look at godly counsel, people that we know are great Christians living for God. We should want to seek out their counsel. We should, again, go to the Word of God. The Word of God is transcultural. It's transgeographical. It's uh, transchronological. What that means is, is the Bible has the principle for all people at all times and all places. And so even though a specific thing like, well, where's fentanyl mentioned in the Bible? Well, the principle is, is be sober. You're supposed to be sober minded. So even though specifics sometimes aren't mentioned, you know, well, what's the Bible say about the Internet? Well, a lot, actually. The principle is there, abstain from the very appearance of evil, all appearance of evil. I'm not saying the Internet itself is evil, but, you know, when you're on the Internet, stay away from the appearance of evil, um, redeeming the time for the days are evil. You know, so take good care. You're not getting addicted. I'll not come under the power of any. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful, but I won't come under the power of any. So don't come under the power of the Internet because they are meant to be addictive. There's a tremendous few books out on that. People that are from Silicon Valley that they say we pay people uh, six and seven figures to make the Internet Addictive. We're not paying them to figure out the world hunger crisis or the world thirst crisis. We want to get you addicted to icons. <laughs> and so Jared Lanier is one of the guy's names. He's invented like 11 or 12 musical instruments himself. And so just know this, that it is something because the longer your eyes are there, the more they can charge advertisers and the more money into the billionaire's pocket springs. Hallelujah. <laughs> As they say, that was a joke, by the way. But uh, there's a basis of truth to that. Uh, so, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So, when people are ungodly, don't listen to their counsel. You know, love them, pray for them, respectfully listen to them, but don't listen to their counsel. Don't let them guide you. Get your counsel from godly Christian counsel and from the Word of God. And you will be blessed. So many people are making wrong decisions. 
The problem so often is stinking thinking, and we need to check up from the neck up. And so, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So if you want to be blessed, people who aren't living for God shouldn't be the ones giving you your counsel. And so, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Now, the way that reads, it's not talking about you're trying to block sinners from going on their way. It's talking about the sinners have a well-worn path. And so, you're blessed if you don't stand in that pathway. You just live for Jesus. There's the footsteps of the flock, Song of Solomon talks about, that you and I need to live in according to the Word of God. All of us need a relationship with Jesus Christ. First of all, we need a born again experience because you can't see the kingdom of God or enter in to the kingdom of God unless we're born again of water and spirit. And then once we're born again of water and spirit, then we can see the path of God and begin to see the way God wants us to walk. So if you want to be blessed, don't stand in the way of sinners. You know, the Oscars, um, some of the headlines this week on the internet news was Satan is the hottest thing going. Well, I don't know if they meant to write the headline like that. Satan is the hottest thing going. Yeah, because he's going to spend eternity in hell, the lake of fire. What they meant is, is people are following after Satan. April 28th through the 30th, they're trying to have the largest um, gathering of Satanists ever in human history in uh, the Boston, Massachusetts area. It's called SatanCon. The Satanic Church from 212 to now has grown basically from almost nothing to now there are over 700,000 adherents in the Satanic Church. Now believe it or not, 700,000 is more people than there are in the United Pentecostal Church in North America. So it's, it's something that's going on. But what are these people doing? They're following after something that's going to lead to hell. All right. So we follow God and we follow God's ways. You know, even when I was in high school and I was not a Christian, I had friends of mine that like worship the devil and stuff like that. And I would tell them, I'd say, now you guys are so stupid. You know, they'd be listening to ACDC, Black Sabbath and all this. I'd say, you guys are so stupid. They'd say, what you mean? I'd say, who created the devil? And they'd say, well, God. I'd say, well, then obviously God is stronger than the devil. Why do you want to be on the losing side? Amen. Amen. I want to be on the winning side. And there's all these songs, you know, well, you know, I want to be uh, drinking bud with my friends and hell. You're not going to be drinking bud. You're, you're going to be saying, I want just one drop of water and you're not going to be able to get that. So. Uh, don't let the devil fool you. Amen. The way of God is the greatest way. Live for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So if you want to be blessed, amen. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in that pathway of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now there's a lot we could look at with the seat of the scornful. First of all, seat means power and authority. So people that are scorners, that word means to mock or deride. So, you know, like, I'm just going to tell you, the Holy Ghost was here during our song service. I really thought, now some of our worshipers and main praisers, they're out sick today. And, but I thought, okay, we're going to have a breakout here. People are going to be dancing. People are going to be jumping. People are going to be running and all this. And so, whenever that happens... You know, people tend to sometimes make fun of people that worship God expressively. Well, don't. I remember I had a friend of mine that uh, he was going to be a wide receiver for the University of Georgia. Got the Holy Ghost, got baptized in Jesus' name. And so I would go to services with him, and almost every service he'd take off running. And then I would say, now why does he have to run every service? And then for about the next six months, every service, God would say, take off running. Okay, hallelujah. You know, and some of it is just letting go of our ego, letting go of our pride, and just saying, I mean, like David, he was a king, but he had somebody make fun of him, somebody very close make fun of him, but you just worship God anyhow, because he's worthy of all of our worship. 
We are supposed to serve the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. And so worshiping God expressively is a good thing. You know, they go to all kinds of sporting events and rock concerts and every other event, and people go crazy. They lose their mind. Somebody will go to the Falcons game, and you'll try to talk to them the next day, and they're like, I can't talk. I lost my voice. Go to the dogs game. Can't talk. I lost my voice. Go to the Green Bay Packer game. It'll be negative nine with a negative 39 windshield. Don't even have a shirt on. They paint their chest with a G. Dye their hair green and gold. And then they're like, well, you Christians are too extreme. Yeah. No. No. We just need to, again, serve God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So don't sit in the seat of the scornful. How many of you just love people who come up and tell you how things should be? And it's like, well, what have you been doing? Well, been judging you for one thing. Well, that's not very scriptural. So don't sit in the seat of the scornful. You know, well, miracles didn't happen in the service. First of all, you don't know that miracles didn't happen in the service. You have no idea. The miracles happen or not. Um, miracles, God, since he's omnipresent, he could be doing miracles all over the place. All right. And so don't ever sit in the seat of the scornful, but have your delight in the law of the Lord. I want us to turn to Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. This is the... Sermon on the Mount Jesus gave. What a beautiful sermon. This is the longest sermon recorded in the Bible that Jesus had. And he did it while he was sitting. So that's okay. It's okay to sit and teach. Amen. They were so gracious to me last week in Knoxville. I had a couple sessions, my very long session. They let me sit down. I said, well, I'm going to stand up and do the second one. And man... I wore myself out. My ankle was so sore Thursday, I mean Tuesday, but, and I did that on Sunday. It was like a delayed reaction, but uh, it was worth it. Hallelujah. I saw the pastor's wife, but the pastor's wife at that church used to be my secretary at IBC. And she's from Maine. And so I knew things were going good. I saw her. She looked over at the assistant pastor's wife and did like, Ooh. Like, you go down that aisle, and I'm going down this aisle. Next thing I know, she's up on a chair praying somebody for, to receive the Holy Ghost. And I'm like, well, look at Radonna. Hallelujah. Praise God. I hit Sister Walter. I said, look, Sister Radonna. Amen. But we just want people to get receive from God. That's what it's all about. God wants us blessed. It's not God's will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance and everlasting life. God wants everybody saved. You know, we had a horrific tragedy in Nashville this past week. But this is a week of tragedy. Tornadoes in Arkansas. I checked on my friends in Arkansas. People died. 600 people plus, I heard, was in the hospital. People died in Illinois. And then that horrific tragedy in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, first of all, we need to continue to pray for our schools Continue to pray coverings over our schools. Continue to pray that there'll never be another school shooting again. God's able to do that. God, we have not because we ask not. And, uh, you know, this poor young lady, she was confused about different things as people are in uh, the world today. On and on and so forth. But, you know, God loved her. God wanted her to receive the Holy Ghost and get baptized in the name of Jesus. And uh, God loved her. And so it's a horrific, horrific tragedy of what happened. And, uh, but we just need to keep praying. And it lets us know we're not in Eden yet. We're not in the New Jerusalem. We're not in Eden anymore, I should say. We're not in the New Jerusalem. This world is broken. And I'm glad we know the fixer, Jesus Christ. God is able to bind up the brokenhearted. So talking about being in the way of sinners and this type of thing, Matthew 7, 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. All you and I have to do to go to hell is be born and live and die. 
We're born in sin, shaping in iniquity. We, we are born sinners. All we have to do is just live our life. We have to come in through the door of Jesus Christ into the straight and narrow way. And you and I, we can't reinterpret the Bible to fit what we want it to say. We have to say, okay, this is what the Word of God says, and we want the Word of God to inform our lives. So enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way. And yes, my historical studies, and yours probably as well, that is where the name Broadway came from. The broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. So when people say, but everybody else is doing it, that's whether something is right or wrong is something it's outside of ourselves it's in the word of god and so it doesn't matter if everybody else is doing it i had a friend of mine he used to say well uh two million chinamen can't be wrong i finally stopped him one day i said yes they can and he came back to me he said wow that's really true they can and so just because everybody's doing something everybody else wasn't getting on the ark eight people decided to get on the ark all right, and the ark was the plan of salvation. So God doesn't change his plan of salvation based on numbers. But I do thank God this is a time of ingathering and increase. So many there be which go in there. But again, God doesn't want anybody to perish. I don't want anybody to perish. I want everybody. I want all the politicians to get the Holy Ghost, get baptized in Jesus' name. Everybody. Verse 14, you know, Donald Trump, he started his presidential campaign in 216, outreach to the evangelical community in Detroit, Michigan. Where did he start at? An apostolic church in Detroit, Michigan. Um, Joe Biden is from Delaware. When uh, people die in Delaware, what's the largest church building in Delaware? It's a United Pentecostal church. So they always ask, can we have the funeral services for all of these dignitaries, friends of Joe Biden, at the, your church in Delaware? They're like, yes. Sister Walter and I, we were talking with some friends of ours the other day. I didn't uh, quite understand everything about where they used to live. But they lived in Maine. They lived right up the street from Stephen King, the novelist. Now, I've always wondered, Stephen King, in his novels, I've never read his novels, but I'm acquainted with them. It just seems like he always had a religious theme. Like, his most popular novel is this horrible thing they turned into a movie called Carrie. It's awful. You know, I would recommend don't ever watch. It's just that bad. It's awful. But it was about holiness Pentecostals, basically. And others of his books have a divine healing thing, holiness Pentecostal. Well, I did not know that uh, the church was right very close to Stephen King's house and that they have prayer for Stephen King on a regular basis. That he'll receive the Holy Ghost, get baptized in Jesus' name. People from the church go work in his house. They meet him at the grocery stores. Talk to him. And so, don't ever, God's always doing a lot more than we know. And so, people like Stephen King can get the Holy Ghost. It's, it's for them. You know, it's for Steven Spielberg. It's for, it's for everybody. And so, verse 14 here in Matthew 7 says this, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So even in American churchianity is not necessarily the way we have to follow the Bible way. Don't you just want to follow the Word of God? Hallelujah. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So verse number 2 says this, so we're blessed if we're not walking in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful. But our delight is in the law of the Lord. I think those words were chosen very carefully. There's nothing accidental or incidental in Holy Scripture. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And so that's a euphemism for the Word of God. God has certain parameters for us. And it's because He loves us. The reason he said, don't eat of that tree, he just wanted free choice, free will being. It wasn't because he was withholding something like Satan said, it's because he loved us. So when God says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die, when we don't sin, it's not, oh, God's just an old funny day. No, it's because he loves us and he wants us to live a great life with him, both here and in the, in the future. 
And so when the preacher gets up and in love says, hey, don't sin, don't do that, don't do this. The preacher loves you because he's preaching the mind of God. He's preaching the word of God to you saying, look, I want you to go to heaven. You know, I appreciate what Brother uh, Taylor said today that sometimes you can, it's easy, and I'll, I'll rephrase what he was driving at. It's easy to take people as a text. You know, somebody gets on your nerves or something, and then you take them as your text. Yeah, don't do that. Father, speak as the oracles of the Holy Ghost. And so, again, it's not God's will that any should perish. And so our delight is in the law of God. Delight yourself in the word of God. Listen to the Bible. Read the Bible. Get on YouTube and let it flash before you. Again, I like what Brother Taylor said. Put some scriptures around your house. Delight in the Lord your God, in the word of God. God is the word. Amen. Delight in that. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. And... Uh, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt be, have good report. So his delight is in the law of God. So it tells us what not to do, and then it tells us what to do. Think on Jesus. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And then in verse uh, 4, excuse me, verse 3, four things happen. If we'll do that, there's four blessings with thinking on God's word day and night. We're going to be planted like a tree by the rivers of water. If you go down to these swamps in South Georgia, the trees that are on the Muckley and on the Kinchafuni and on the Flint, they're doing pretty good because they've got a constant water source. So when our minds are on Jesus, we're going to be doing pretty good because he is life. And that more abundantly, he's eternal life. And it's just going to be making us grow. So the light and the law of the Lord in his law, does he meditate day and night? So you're going to be like a tree that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. You're going to bear the fruit of the spirit. His leaf also shall not wither. It's just going to be constant there. And then whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Isn't that amazing? You go to do something, God just puts his blessings on it. I am so thankful for that. Now, verses 4 through 6 tells us what happens to people that don't do that. We're going to go over just three more scriptures really quick today in the book of Psalms about the blesser. 2.12, 2.12, kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are they that put their trust in him. You want to be blessed? Put your trust in Jesus. The only one that can guide us, lead us, and help us. Put your trust in Jesus. You'll be blessed. I don't know what to do with my 401k. I don't know. Uh, you know, they're talking about the BRICS nation or pulling out of the dollar hegemony. And, and we don't know what's the best investment. I'm just going to tell you, put your trust in Jesus. God is going to take care of you. God will lead and guide you. So blessed are they that put their trust in God. And then in 3.8, I love this. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Selah. So just because you and I are living for God, you are blessed just because you're part of the church of the living God. You don't have to pray about it. You're just blessed. I mean, because you get to know the one true and living God. You've got a, you're a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. You've got a new future. Your sins are washed away. You and I, we're just blessed. God, he's, Jesus is God Almighty, and we're in the body of Christ. We're just blessed because we live for God. So if you want to be blessed, get in the church. Get in the body of Christ. Amen. And then 512, one last passage of scripture, 512 says this, For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, wilt thou compass him or surround him as with a shield. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous when you're saved, born again, and you're trying to live for Jesus with everything on the inside of you. God's going to bless you. And then he's going to surround you and I. He's going to surround us as with a shield. That means all the fiery darts of the wicked one are going to be quenched because you're just living for God. There is a way, a path of holiness. I'm so thankful for it. So the blesser is so good to us. And he wants to bless everybody on planet earth. And he wants to bless you and I today. I want to let God bless me. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. So why don't we stand to our feet? Why don't we just talk to God and say, God, I want you to bless me. Could you do that? Let's just everybody pray together. Hallelujah. God, I glorify you. I love you, Lord Jesus. I magnify you, God. Hallelujah. 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 You are the blesser. You have done great things, Lord Jesus. You have done great things. Hallelujah. And we bless your holy name. God, let everybody that is here today get into the body of Christ. If they are not in the body of Christ, it is your grace. It is your love. It is your kindness that pulls us into the body of Christ. God, the goodness of God 